The scene shows a chess set placed in a temple. The render is set to NTSC D1 format. The animation is set to 40 frames and the rook and the camera are animated to move in the scene. You will render out OpenEXR data and post-process the results in Autodesk Composite. Post-processing in a compositor can be extremely helpful and fast when you need to edit your scene for color correction, blur effects and other changes. In this movie, we shall be saving out a single frame, but keep in mind that you can also save out an animated sequence of OpenEXR files. The first thing you need to do is to define which channels you want to render out. This is done through the Render Elements tab of the Render dialog. There, you can add the elements you are interested in. Start with the Diffuse element, as this provides you with the color information in the scene. Next, add the Lighting element. Notice that you can choose which lighting part you want to include. If you wish to separate these, you can have three lighting elements, each with the appropriate option enabled. For now, leave all three options enabled. Next, add a background element. This will let you manipulate the backdrop separately from the rest of the scene. The next element you add is a matte element. This is arguably the most useful element you can have as it simplifies the selection of objects in post work. Here, you will use it to separate the animated rook from the rest of the scene objects, which will ultimately let you edit the rook independently. Rename the element Matte Rook to remember which object it affects. Scroll down and enable the Include option. Click the Include button, select the rook from the list and send it to the right side. Keep in mind that you can have as many mats for as many objects as you deem necessary. Add the reflection element to the list. The chess pieces are quite reflective and you will need to process that information. The next element you add is the MR shader element. This lets you output any mental ray shader as a separate element. It is particularly useful to create an ambient occlusion pass for the scene. In the parameters rollout, select the ambient reflective occlusion map as a shader. To edit its parameters, drag an instance of this map to the Slate Material Editor. In this case, the only value you need to adjust is the max distance value. Set it to 200. The last element you need is a Z-Depth element. This element is useful for creating depth of field effects. Notice the minimum and maximum values. Leave the minimum value to 100, but change the maximum value to 20,000. This is roughly the distance from the camera to the corner of the chessboard. Now that you have defined the render elements, it is time to define the rendering output. In the Common tab, set the time output to single, or if you prefer, you can render the animated active time segment. In the Render Output group, click Files, choose a target folder and type in the file name chess.exr. As you press Enter, a dialog appears. At the top of the dialog, you can set options like 16-bit, 32-bit formats, compression rates and so on. Leave the defaults for the time being. More importantly, the Render Elements group lets you automatically synchronize this dialog with the Render Elements dialog, or if you so choose, you can manually select the elements you have defined. You even have control on the types and formats of the individual channels. Leave the defaults for this exercise. Click OK to exit the dialog and render the camera view. The OpenEXR file gets saved to disk. In addition to the main render, seven other renders display. These represent the render elements that are now embedded channels in the SaveDXR file. Save your scene and launch Autodesk Composite.